We're here with Dr. Happer, a physics professor at Princeton who gave a presentation on uh, climate change here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you for being with us, Dr. Happer. Uh, so please tell us a little bit about anthropogenic climate change. Uh, should we be really concerned about CO2 and what do you think? Well, uh, no, actually CO2 will be good for the earth. If you look at geological history, CO2 levels are unusually low now. It's very seldom that they've been this low. Uh, for the last 600 million years or so. And so many plants are not growing as well as they could if they had more CO2. So CO2 by itself will be very good for the earth. More will be a good thing. And uh, we hear a lot about CO2 being a pollution that's going to drive a catastrophic global warming and um, we're all doomed if we don't regulate and tax and eventually phase it out. Uh, what do you think? Are we going to see dangerous climate change because of this? No, it's pretty clear that we're not going to see dangerous climate change. If nothing else, the earth has already done this experiment many times, you know, because in the past, in the geological past, CO2 levels have been four times, five times, even higher than today, and their life flourished all over the earth and in the oceans too. So it's nonsense. Uh, it's not a pollutant. Now, there are real pollutants that we ought to be concerned about, and in this frenzy over CO2, we're neglecting many of them. And nobody wants to live in a polluted world if you go to Shanghai or Beijing or Delhi, you know, the air, you can cut it with a knife some days. That's not CO2 at all. That's fly ash, you know, it's sulfur oxide. So there are obvious things that can be controlled and should be controlled but not CO2. Okay, at, at a lot of these UN uh, climate summits, they, I mean, just a few years ago, they were saying they had 95% certainty that uh, man's CO2 emissions were really driving this. What is the current state of climate science? Do these guys really have a solid understanding of how the climate works and how you know a little bit of CO2 here is actually going to affect it? What is the current state of climate science? Well, I, I think climate science is uh, in a shambles. Uh, most of the major climate models have predicted much more warming than we have observed. And uh, they're gradually realizing that they've got something fundamentally wrong. And the thing that's most likely wrong is they've assumed much more sensitivity than CO2 than, than is actually there. They've tried to hide that by keeping the CO2 sensitivity high for political reasons, although scientifically it's very hard to defend that. And they claim that it's being canceled by aerosols and other things that if they weren't there, the earth would be warming very rapidly, but it's pretty clear now that even aerosols aren't enough. And so the most obvious solution, which is that CO2 is not a very good warmer, is something they're unwilling to admit, but it's the truth. Okay, I, I know science and, and physics are your specialty, but maybe as a scientist you have some thoughts on this. I'm just curious. How can it be that there are still so many scientists who, who are running around saying that the science is settled and that we need to uh, accept the IPCC's conclusions? Um, I mean, do you have any thoughts? I, I don't know if you want to speak to the motivations of other people, but what's really driving this? Well, uh, most scientists uh, don't know any more about climate than you do. You know, they work in different fields, and I would guess you know more than many of them. Uh, so scientists in general, academics in general, feel that they ought to be appreciated more by society. You know, they're smart, you know, they've got tenure, you know, why am I not rich, you know? So uh, I think it's partly a resentment that they haven't done better. Uh, you know, they, uh, society treats them like ordinary people when they're, they feel like they're superior people. And uh, so I think there's a lot of uh, frustration there that is showing. And then there's tribalism that uh, if one area of science is being questioned, you know, climate science, even if you work in neurology or, you know, some other completely different field, you tend to rally around because you regard it as a, an attack on your own field. And so there's a, this sort of tribal reaction too. So there, there, there are many uh, motives. Uh, as you say, it's very hard to uh, identify someone else's motives. And there are lots of scientists like me. I'm certainly not the only one who are quite skeptical about the whole thing and a little bit embarrassed for science itself. What is it like to be 
a scientist and come out and say the things that you say that you know the CO2 is not a pollution and we need to take a step back here I mean what has been the reaction of your fellow scientists uh, I mean have you been treated differently since this since you spoke out on this issue what has been the reaction from your colleagues I've been treated pretty well by most of my colleagues you know they uh, believe, still believe in academic freedom you know and uh, so I have no complaints on that score you know of course I get lots of death threats and hate mail and things like that uh, from non-scientists. So I think one of the things that other scientists ought to understand is that they're in bed with a movement that is not a very good movement, you know, it's a, it's a vicious movement and uh, they ought to denounce it. You know, I noticed, for example, that President-elect Trump went to some trouble to uh, denounce, you know, all of the bigots that were riding his coattails. He says, stop it, I don't approve of this. But I don't see that happening with scientists, you know, and, and so that troubles me, actually. Uh, is there anything else you want to add on climate or CO2 or this conference or anything else at all? Well, it's uh, been a very interesting conference. I've never been to Phoenix before, so I'm glad to be here. Some of the very first studies of uh, the uh, positive effects of CO2 on plants were done right here in Phoenix by uh, Sherwood Idso, another scientist. So it's a real honor to finally be here. I hope to see some of those sites before I leave. Thank you so much, Dr. Hyper, and uh, have a good time.